and welcome San Diego Rotary Club 33 members, our honored guests, and those watching on Zoom to the 33rd oldest, the 10th largest, and the number one best Rotary Club in the world. Our chair of the day today is from the class of 2010, Tracy Sunland. Tracy's best known in San Diego as one of the founders of the Rock and Roll Marathon series in 1988, which grew to involve 29 events in 15 states, Washington, D.C., and six other countries, in which over 500,000 people ran each year before he left the organization. His experience includes college coaching at Georgetown, Colorado, and USC. In 1973, Tracy organized one of the first suits to establish women's athletic scholarships. In 1980, he initiated the first test case, which led to open running as we now know it, today with prize money and above the table appearance money. He was and still is the youngest track coach in Olympic history at age 20 in 1972. And next, he will be bringing the World Athletics Road Running Championships to San Diego in late September of 2025. Everyone here will be able to run either a road mile, a 5K, or a half marathon. Get ready for it. Please welcome Tracy Sunland as our chair of the day. That's right, there is no time limit. So there is no excuse for you all not to be there September 26 to 28 in 2025. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Today, because today you all are in for a very special treat. Miles Levine, the award-winning film producer of Under the Lights and a disability advocate, will share his short film, A Story of Sam, a boy with epilepsy, so desperate to feel like a normal kid that he goes to the prom while knowing that the lights will make him have a seizure. This inspiring and compelling story is a universal tale of compassion, acceptance, and raising awareness surrounding anyone who has ever felt excluded or marginalized. The script placed in the top 1% of the 8,200 scripts in the world's most prestigious screenplay competition, the Academy Nickel Fellowship. And then he won a $50,000 award at the world-famous Tribeca Film Festival, which Miles is using, is now using, to turn his short film into a full-length feature film to hopefully come out next year to further spread the word. In addition to the Tribeca Film Festival, he has also been honored at the SCAD Savannah Film Festival, among others, and most importantly, at least to me, the Rhode Island International Film Festival. As many of you know, probably know, I have a tie to epilepsy through my good friend and our fellow Rotarian Olympic gold medalist, Al Joyner, who lost his wife multiple Olympic gold medalist Flojo, to epilepsy. And of course, dear friend to us all, Wendy Hiroshima Khan, our future president, whose daughter Reiko is living with controlled epilepsy. And there are also other members of our club with direct ties to this disease. So I feel especially honored to be the chair of the day. Do any of you know that one in 10 people will have a seizure in their lifetime? And one in 26 people worldwide will be diagnosed with epilepsy. This isn't statistically very different from the fact that one in eight women will develop breast cancer in the United States in their lifetime. Who would have thunk? Everyone in the world is aware of the life-threatening and life-altering effects of breast cancer. But other than knowing that epilepsy meant someone had seizures, I knew nothing about the disease until last night at Wendy's annual Epilepsy Foundation Gingerbread City Gala. That ignorance must end. Miles Levine, 
had his first seizure at four, and at 15 realized that today's world digested information and learned things through video and film and set off on his life's mission to educate the non, his non-epileptic peers and then the world about epilepsy and by doing so eliminate the fears and stigmas that have confined his life. Hopefully today, with all of you caring and loving and doing Club 33 Rotarians, we will, be, we will take another step towards that goal. Ladies and gentlemen, Miles Levine. A quick shout out for Tracy's pants. Take a look. Um, yes. Yeah, I heard there's 24 of them. Um, I, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, epilepsy really exists in a silo where we, when we talk about this, it is almost exclusively to our own community. We don't get the opportunity to be in rooms like this because people don't have any reason to come hang out with us and learn about something that they strictly don't care about. And uh, as, as Tracy said, I was diagnosed about the age of four, and I like to joke that I, I don't know, I was four years old. So I am now, I'm 28, and I've lived with this my entire life. I, everything changed for me when I went to a camp for kids living with epilepsy. It's a huge deal for a kid with epilepsy to go to camp. And a lot of them have, hadn't been away from their parents their entire life. And I would meet kids my age, right around the age of 15, 16, would tell me that they had never made a friend before. Okay, so who knows someone in the first or second degree that has Alzheimer's, right? Cerebral palsy, MS. Epilepsy affects and kills more people than all three of those combined. And we don't talk about it. And in the epilepsy story, in the epilepsy narrative, the seizures are just the punctuation. It's all the time in between that a person's really living with epilepsy. The only time they're not there for that is when they're actually having the seizure. And so we have every incentive in the world not to talk about it. The, the suicide rate is estimated at three to five times the national average. Unemployment at 50%. We can't get HR, okay, to show up at the Epilepsy Foundation Gala. The school bully is never going to buy a ticket. But it occurred to me around this age that people love, love, love to watch a movie about something they've never seen before. And when the only time that you've seen a seizure is in a hospital movie or in a horror sequence, we have trained the general public to fear us. We've, we've sent them to camp to fear us. But what if their point of reference for a person living with epilepsy was a movie that they saw on their own because they just wanted to sit on their couch and be entertained like everybody else instead of the hospital movie or the horror sequence? I really believe that if you stood outside a grocery store and you asked everyone, are you a good person? They'll say yes. People identify as good people. They want to be part of the solution. But when they don't have information and there's something new that's in scary in front of them, they, they, they react from the, the lizard brain. They have no choice. It's scary. But if the first reaction is, is empathy, and seeing a person behind all of this, then we bring those numbers way, 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 way down. And something that occurs to me is that everybody over the age of 75 in a movie presents memory issues. It's no wonder that we can raise money for Alzheimer's outside of, our, of, of the, the community, outside of the, the people living with it and their families. We, we don't have that privilege with epilepsy. So I made this film, and it's, it's very short, and you'll watch it now. And it was just an idea of, could we make something different? Could we make something about a person living with this? And it exploded. And all of a sudden, I received fan art every single day 
from kids that did not have seizures that decided it was cool to talk about. I still get fan fiction. This kid ripped up a Barbie doll and made the, the main character an action figure. It's truly wild. People are using this to talk about epilepsy for the first time because they don't have to explain themselves. They just say, watch this. And, um, and it's, it's really been a privilege in my life. So I'm, I'm really glad to get to share it with you in this room. So thank you. Please tell me this is the boys' room. Okay, time to go. Hey, is your hair wet? Get out. I can't. Jesus, come on. Ah! Oh my god! Ow! Okay, uh, I just look at my shoulder. I'll call somebody. No, I'll don't. call like a, an ambulance no, or please, something. Don't. I'm so sorry. Don't. I'm so sorry. Do you know Shelby Powell? Can you go tell her that I'll be right out? And I didn't forget. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Yeah, um, uh, this guy hurt his shoulder. No. Uh, yeah, I think he needs no. help. Hang up. Hang up. Yeah, he said he just located it. Come on, hang up! Why are you in here? What's the address? Ma'am? Hello? Please go talk to Shelby. She's saving a dance for me. Please, no ambulance. Look, look, I got this, I got this. What? What? Stop! Call my mom. Are you kidding me? I'm really, really not supposed to be here. In the girls' bathroom. Imagine that. At prom. Scare is running. So my boyfriend making out with someone. Sorry. So how many beers did it take to get you into the girls' bathroom? I don't drink. Seizures. It's a blindfold. I thought it would help with the light. I guess not. You can't tell anyone. You can't tell anyone, please. Of course. She's 
see if you can dance for me. Mom, why don't you just hang here for a bit? Hey, no, 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 wait, 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 please come back, wait, no, stop, if you stay in here, I'll talk to you. Tell me where? Sam. Sam, will you tell me where you're going? Hang up. No. no. Sam, tell me it's not dangerous. Okay, you're good. 911, please take your emergency. Okay, okay. This guy's having a seizure. <laughs> Don't so call my mom. Sam? Check to see if he's carrying any epilepsy medication. It would kill her. It'll kill her. What is your location? Um, we're at uh, Sullivan Valley High. An ambulance should be there within three minutes. Stay where you are, okay? I said it'll be here in three minutes. Would make you have a seizure. Because it's worth it. A dumb dance is worth having a seizure? Yeah. Hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. I just want to be normal. One time. He didn't know. No. I pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together for three years and I couldn't take it. I'm sorry. You can't just leave like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you hated me for it. story like that. You're gonna have a seizure no matter what at this point, right? So, um, thank you. So now what we're doing 
because it turned out to be worthwhile, is we're making the full 90-minute Under the Lights film. And it features some very big movie stars um, that, we, that are passionate about the cause. And there's never been anything of this scale in the, in the name of epilepsy awareness, as far as the general public is concerned. I really believe that we can hit 10 million eyes with a movie destined for theaters on this subject matter and entirely change the conversation on epilepsy stigma. And so we're in the middle of trying to close the gap on our fundraising and we want to shoot it in March. And I'm very, very excited. It's, it's the only thing I've thought about every single day, you know, for six years. Um, and that's not what this is. Um, I'm, I'm sensing a difficulty with QR codes. So uh, what this does is I want you to know, be the first to know when the movie comes out, when we're all done with it. And so this takes you to underthelightsfilm.com and a little pop-up comes up, put your email in, and then I'll email you when it comes out and you can see it. Um, if the QR code's no good, and if you can't type it out on your phone, lights on the floor will appear to direct you to your nearest millennial. <laughs> There's about four of you. But, yeah, now I'm going to get the cane, right? <laughs> but underthelightsfilm.com, and if you type that in, I'd really love to share it with you. Um, epilepsy stigma has been about the same for the last 20 years. We've made progress as far as the cure goes. We talk a lot about the cure, but there are two cures, because the only medicine for cruelty is empathy. And there are very few people that can work on the actual medical cure. We have very, very smart people out there trying to find the, the fight for the last seizure. But in between that time, we have a lot of work to do on a person-to-person -person level to start thinking from the prefrontal cortex instead of the brain stem, instead of the lizard brain. So thanks for this opportunity to be here. I really appreciate it. It's, it's a real big honor, so thank you. have any questions? Yes, in the back. Thank you. That was a very moving film. Thank you. Um, a question, if you could answer it, because I think when someone t talks about epilepsy, you kind of think of what's called grand mal seizures. And what percent, if you know, if, if it's relevant, what percentage of epileptics have grand mal seizure versus a lighter form of a seizure? I actually don't know, but I have someone here who does, probably. <laughs> um, um, I'm Annie Reyes. I am a neuropsychologist working at the UCSC Epilepsy Center. I've been working with patients with epilepsy for over 10 years. Um, so that's a really great question because the public only knows through film, um, through TV, the grand mal, so the convulsions, which is when someone's body is kind of moving. Um, and that's typically what the public's perception of seizures are. However, um, there is a more common form, form of seizure, which is what we call a focal seizure, either with impaired awareness or without impaired awareness. And usually these seizures look like when people are just kind of losing consciousness or they kind of lose attention. Uh, you don't see any kind of convulsions, you don't see any movements of the body, and those are more common. Um, and oftentimes people uh, do not know that someone's having one of those seizures. Um, so you're correct, um, convulsions are common. However, this is what we call the complex partial or the kind of focal seizures are more common and those are um, less likely for someone in the public to actually be aware that they're happening. I believe there are something like 40 different kinds. Thank you, Miles. We have time for one more question. Miles, thank you so much. My name is Corey and when I was watching your short film, I had a thought back to third grade and there was this young girl Amanda who um, had epilepsy and would have seizures in her class and I haven't thought about her since elementary school and watching her film made me consider where has her life gone and she never continued in middle school and high school I don't know if she got homeschooled or found another school to go to but I recall deep in my brain, this sense of not understanding it as a kid. And not that anybody in the classroom was mean to her, 
but we probably didn't show her the empathy and the kindness that she so needed in those moments of going through that around her peers. So I'm very excited for your movie, but I'm also curious what can and is being done in the schools so that kids can grow up with a sense of empathy and kindness to those in their classroom. There's a very big fight right now to make uh, seizure first aid mandatory or at least even optional, even optional uh, for, in schools. Uh, you'd be surprised at just how it recently passed in California as an optional. Uh, it, it, you're, you're way more likely to need to administer seizure first aid with one in 26 people, right, than use a fire extinguisher, but you gotta know, you have to be taught to use a fire extinguisher. Uh, the other thing that schools uh, that I'm very happy about is sometimes they show the film. That it's a lot more engaging to use entertainment than to make them watch a, a PSA, although that's a, a good approach as well. Um, but a lot of times the, the school nurse is, is too afraid to even touch you know, the medication or the, the, they, there's, they feel a sense of liability. And I, that really does have to change. We have to treat it the same way that we do when a kid has a peanut allergy, they need an EpiPen. It really shouldn't be different. You turn a kid on their side, you make sure they don't hit their head, you don't put anything in their mouth, you just wait. As Sam says, just be here. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So thanks for having me. And that's a great question, Corey, because the question is, how many of us know what to do if somebody had a seizure right now? Put your hands up if you really think you know, okay? And I know because I worked for the Y for 22 years, so we went through the trainings, but highly recommend a training to find out more about this. And so, Miles Gordon McAnally's Rotary International presidential theme is create hope in the world. And, and you've certainly done this today by showing us what a young person on the move can do with the mission to really make this message known by everybody, not just here at Rotary, but all around the world. So may this coin serve as a reminder of the hope for Rotary you shared here today. And then my hope is that we can reimagine how Rotary can develop young leaders all around the world. And I think this could be a topic that could be discussed among all these high school students. And so what we like to do is donate in your name student self-leadership to the high school or high schools of your choice. Oh, that's and it's a free program, so we appreciate you being here. Club 33, you could visit that QR code and do it yourself as well for the high schoolers in your life. Let's give Miles one more big thank hand you. right now. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, appreciate you. Okay, now, all right now. So Miles, thank you for your life of doing good service before a self on display today here at San Diego Rotary. When I heard about today's speaker and his connection to epilepsy, I couldn't think of a better person than Annie Reyes, who we heard from already, to give us today's 30-second parting message and then ring the bell to adjourn the 21st meeting of our 113th year. Born and raised in the Dominican Republic, Annie came to Washington Heights in New York City at the age of 10. Today she is our daughter in love, married to our son Michael, and the mother of our seventh grandchild Cairo, who will be one in two weeks. And let me add, she has a PhD in neuropsychology from UCSD. Please welcome Dr. Annie Reyes. All right, and thank you for the invite. I just wanna make this really uh, quick and just really kind of focused on what we'd be talking about, which is stigma related to epilepsy. Um, so just to kind of put things into perspective, there's 50 million people in the world with epilepsy. Epilepsy affects individuals from low to um, middle income countries more. There's a higher prevalence of epilepsy among communities of color as well as communities from lower socioeconomic status. Importantly, individuals with epilepsy, as we heard earlier, have um, lower income, lower education, as well as lower occupation. They're less likely to be married, less likely to have friends and family in a network. And all this creates isolation and social stigma. One of the best things that we could do is if we know people with epilepsy, is to befriend them and to create a network of support. A lot of these individuals don't drive. So for example, living here in San Diego, that makes it very difficult to get a job, to actually move around. I come from New York City where driving is not necessary, but here in San Diego, it is, right? So something as simple as being able to drive when you have active seizures prevents these individuals from actually having a normal life. 
So one of the things that we really need to focus is in creating awareness of epilepsy and through the Epilepsy Foundation, but also donating. Donating for research, not just in terms of medications, but also in terms of creating community um, programs for individuals living with epilepsy, scholarships for students who are living with epilepsy, as well as for families and parents who may have children with epilepsy and may not actually be able to work to support their kids. So um, this was an amazing film. I can't wait to watch the entire film. Um, and thank you for having me. <laughs>